Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first live of 2023, which I have, I'm still getting used to saying 2023. Thankfully, I haven't stuffed it up anywhere that's kind of important yet, but it's bound to happen eventually. Do let me know if you can hear me, if you're here on the live, and if you're here on the replay, well, hopefully there is sound. Anywho, today I thought, though, we could get prepared for February because my February plan with me is supposed to come out on... Thursday, and I haven't started planning any of it. But before we do that, I figured we'd just have a little look at how January was going, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, just, just checking in kind of thing. So projects list is going just fine. Notably, haven't written anything down in my uh, vlogs section. We're just gonna ignore that. It's a problem for future me. <laughs> But my um, YouTube section's going fine, and Patreon's going good too. I've also got a little other list here for some other filming that I need to do that isn't necessarily my, like, regularly scheduled videos, so it's just sitting down here. Cover page is looking cute. I do like having the projects list next to the cover page, because usually, like, you know, in the way back whens, when this was a quote page, I would never turn back to this page. But now that it's the projects list, I get to come back and appreciate my cover page, which I think is good. Flipping over though, we have the monthly log. That one is going, I don't know, fine. Let's see. We did do the book club announcement, so we can tick that off. A little cattywampus tick here. I've got a new filming setup at the moment, so I'm kind of getting used to the spacing. It's a little bit further right than I'm used to and typically I would have my microphone here but it doesn't really fit here anymore so it's off to the side so getting used to that. In terms of events that are coming up we've got Bujo Wednesday on Wednesday because you know that's what happens on Wednesdays so things to look forward to. Thursday is when my video is going to come out but I don't put my videos on my monthly log and then we've got a day off on Saturday. And we're going to have a date day, Vogel and I. And then on Sunday, we've got the Jashi Kurin Community Hangout on Discord, which is something to very much look forward to. I'm thinking it's probably going to be a long one. Like, literally, when I was planning it, I was talking to my friend Monica and <laughs> Rachel and saying, like, hey, so are you guys free for just, like, a 12-hour journaling session? <laughs> on Sunday and they're like yeah sure why not so it's probably going to be quite long so if you can make it along make sure to make it along oh ads made you miss the start I'm sorry well I mean it wasn't anything too interesting right it was just me being like yo can you hear me yeah Monica's like he 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 yes so 12 hour not stream 12 hour hangout should be a good time but the nice part is is that because it is really long it kind of hits all of the time zones unless you sleep for 12 hours a day and you're like perfectly timed to be sleeping when we're doing stuff, which could, could in theory happen, but anywho. So this is looking good. We have the actions list, which I just like self applause. Yay for me. I have been so chuffed with like one, the fact that I'm actually using it Two, the fact that I got it like completely filled in before the month started, which is really like the kicker for me. If it's not filled in before the month starts, it doesn't get used. So that is very good. Yay. I don't think there's anything in particular that I can really tick off yet. Maybe like review lives survey, like technically I've done that, but I haven't picked live times, which might seem odd because I, you know, um, I'm here and we're doing a live, but this is probably not the final like time that we're going to do. I think I'm going to try and pick a couple of times so that then we can get kind of range in terms of who can actually make it along because honestly, like, I'm always very, very pleased to have our large international community, but it does make it very tricky to get a time that's kind of suitable for everybody. But, you know, so I figured we could mitigate some of the issues with that by having multiple live times, not multiple in the same week, but, you know, each week when we do a live, we could kind of change it up. Yeah, anywho. So, in terms of the one off though, they're going really well. We still have a couple of things on here that I want to get done before the end of the month. And then weekly actions, I haven't done any of these yet for week three because it's literally Monday of week three for me. So, like, I've got time. Alrighty, let's see if I can make sure that I'm actually reading the comments as we go through. I apologize if I miss your comment. I don't mean to. 
But yeah, so like Monica says, if you do come along to our Hangouts, you do not have to be on camera. You also don't have to be on voice. You can just totally lurk. It's all good. It's kind of just nice to have some body or some bodies. Hopefully it's not just me by myself, but um, a bunch of people to kind of just, you know, potter along with, journal with. It's like pseudo company in a way or real company if you're getting involved in conversation. But yeah. Oh, question. Did you have a spread for a list of tasks split by period? Yes, I have a few of those. Um, let's see, where's the most, where's the most close one? <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. One of the ones that I have is a, like, how often should I? So this is like daily tasks, weekly tasks, annual, monthly, seasonal, and biannual tasks. So this one's mainly focusing on, like, housework kind of stuff so like <laughs> I love this list of daily tasks because like as if all of this happens daily but shh, it's fine past Jess was optimistic it's okay oh but making the bed squeegee the shower like squeegeeing the shower and making the bed totally happens washing the dishes well that's what Vogel is for I mean uh <laughs> wiping kitchen counter rinsing the used sinks emptying the kitchen rubbish etc 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 so this might be the one you're thinking of, or it might be a different one. But yes, ta-da. So, ooh, your January has been a dumpster fire. I'm sorry to hear that. That sucks so hard. Yeah, it's, it's always kind of like, not to necessarily to say that it's not like bad at any other time of the year, obviously. But it's like, I very much have that feeling of like, trying to start the year off quote right and when something comes and like derails that for me I know that it hits a lot harder compared to other times so I hope that that's not necessarily what's happened for you but that's really hard so we have the actions list that is looking good we have the habit tracker now I guess I probably should have planned out in advance what I wanted on my habit tracker before I actually set it up but I didn't so it turns out I only actually have two things that I'm tracking on my habit tracker one of them is filling in my no spend tracker and one of them is filling in my five year journal which as you can see by the little x's I have been doing that consistently yay for me we might as well cross this one off and we can jump into that journal and fill it in because it won't take too long. I know that we are in theory planning for February and we will get there, but this first. <laughs> Where is my pen? There we go. <laughs> it's like December 52nd. Damn. No, that does sound hard. Where are my journals? There we go. So. This one is my yearly collections journal. So this is where I keep trackers and stuff that are for the whole year so that then when I inevitably get only four months in this journal, I uh, don't have to try and transfer trackers over. It makes it a little easier. So the challenge you can see is also going well. I probably could have picked better colors for this, if I'm honest. Like to me, gray just seems like a, not like a negative color, but it, if it was by itself, you'd probably think that was not done as opposed to done. But 16th, which is today, I have not spent unnecessarily. I have not gone against the rules that I set myself for my no spend, which is really going to be a low spend, a no spend challenge. But 16 days out of 365 is a pretty good start, in my opinion, personally. Ooh, yeah, super lazy dinner. I love that. For dinner tonight, Vogel made us... Um, I think it's called like creamy mustard chicken or something. So it's got like mushrooms and chicken, doy, it's in the name, and mustard, doy, <laughs> it's also in the name. But it looks pretty good. Um, it was pretty tasty. He's been meaning to make it for me for a while. I say he's been meaning as if it wasn't like my fault that it hadn't happened. <laughs> yeah. He, um, he's been wanting to make it for me for quite a while. And I've just been like, no, nah, I don't feel like it. I don't want that. And I went into his office earlier today and I was like, you know, today would be the kind of day that I would pester you to let me have takeout for dinner, but I'm not going to do that. And then he like didn't respond. I'm like, no, I need you to be more proud of me right now. <laughs> like, please give me compliments. <laughs> so yeah, should have come over for dinner. It was very tasty. Yeah. We'll make it for you one time when you come over. 
let's see. You've been on a, what, a spending spree, which is unusual for you. Yeah, I feel that. Like, I find that when I get into a spending mood, I, like, really get into a spending mood. Ooh, Tyree Curry. Oh, that sounds really good, too. <laughs> My, um... My dad makes a tirade curry that has, like, this cucumber salad that goes with it. And they're just, like, them together. Like, the cool cucumber salad and then, like, the hot of the cu- like the curry. It's just really, really good. Five-year journal. I'm not going to fill that one out. But I can confirm that I have been filling it in, as possibly noted by the X's there. But just for proof, you know. So I haven't actually filled in this first page yet. I've been meaning to, but I'm not too sure what I want to do with it yet. And then... After this, we have, like, the then and now, but that's, like, personal. And also spoilers. Like, you know, come back in five years and I'll show it to you then. (laughs) So the memories page I haven't filled in because I'm going to probably fill it in at the end of January. So go through the pages and see what the, uh, like, what's the word? Highlights. There we go. See what the highlights are or, like, the memorable moments and put them into the little box. Just so it's only the... Only the big ticket things rather than the the day-to-day stuff because this is the day-to-day stuff. So you see I just do kind of three lines for each of the days of the year and then like come back next year and do it again in the same place. So it's a really kind of like low commitment way to do the five-year journal and because I've set it up so there's no daily questions or anything I can fill it in however I want to really. So we're up to... The 16th, I put my dots in, but I'm not going to write down stuff until, you know, the end of the day for me. <laughs> but that one is good. That one is still going. But the Habit Tracker did not need a full page for this. Absolutely not. So that's something to review for February. And this is kind of why we're doing the flip through so that we can kind of get information about what we are using, what we're not using, so that when we set up February, we're doing it with like, an informed mindset. Does that kind of make sense? Ooh, 7 a.m. breakfast, not dinner. <sighs> breakfast is the best meal of the day, honestly. Like, all breakfast food is good for pretty much whenever, if you're me. So, the self care tracker obviously has a lot more habits going for it. And this one I've just been very pleased with as well because we're getting things done. Like, normally I don't necessarily use my habit tracker as a way to motivate me to do my habits. I usually just use it as like a record of me slacking off, (laughs) for lack of a better phrase. But I've actually been very motivated to get it done because just having this like full or filling up page of X's is just making me very happy. One thing that's not making me so happy, um, we'll get to that later when we get to a page further on, is the way that I've been filling out the trackers because like these are X's and those are ticks. That's a little bit bothersome, but you know. For this one though, we see like technically speaking I now can't cross this off because like technically technically this is work and the little clock means to finish work by dinner time I like no work after dinner time but I feel like this is more like a social hangout this doesn't feel like work you know so I'll leave it to you what do you guys think do you think I can cross it off as like a no work after dinner or do you think that this is technically work and I should have a big black dot there to say that I you know failed to finish work by dinner time so for the p though the p means my pm pill so I did take that I take that with dinner because it has to be taken with food so it's nice and easy leisure time I mean I consider this to be leisurely I'm having a good time and I hope you are too I am thirsty though so I'm gonna take a drink Tink. So yeah, there we go. You guys, you guys reckon so. It's a social hangout. We're allowed to cross it off. We're all good. Nobody needs to know <laughs> except all the people here. <laughs> White chocolate chips in your toasty instead of grated cheese. That would have been a choice, Monica. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't. Yeah, see, I don't feel like it's work, so I think I can cross it off. It's all good. Because, okay, honestly, like some of these days I probably did like work related tasks but when I think of work I think of the stuff that I have to do that is not as enjoyable for instance like video editing which is not really my jam but kind of an integral part of what I've got going on here so but anywho so little book means reading I usually read before bed so I haven't done that 
PM teeth brushing. I certainly hope not, otherwise my Coke would taste like crawler. So no, and flossing, that's going to happen later too. Crack, says the house. So book club tracker. I am still not in love with the way this tracker turned out, but I am getting the book read. So huzzah. <laughs> That one's all good. Notes, I don't have anything to add at the moment. It was really just to kind of fill a space on the page. So I'm not sure how much use it's going to get. So I might not include that for February. Instagram posting and elsewhere posting is going all good. We can note down that I have posted today on Instagram. You can see I'm using it less as a kind of, I guess, a true schedule and more as a like record of progress, I suppose you could say. Let's see. That one was my January cover pages through the ages. And by that, I mean like seven years of January cover pages. <laughs> Jan covers. I'm enjoying the book so far. I mean, like, it's not my utmost favouritest read of the century, but it's not like a total slog. I'm... I'm enjoying the story, but I also don't think it's going to end up in, like, my top 20 books of forever. <laughs> Why not include a sentence for each chapter that you read for your book log? Yeah, for sure. I could do something like that, hey. I mean, there's certainly space to do something here, but I I'm not sure at this stage what it is I want to do. You could put your habit tracker and book club reading tracker together. Yeah, I could do that as well. I was kind of thinking that I might just turn my self-care tracker and have it track it into the same thing because I'm like technically it's like taking care of my financial self and then memory keeping which is kind of just a nicety so I could put them together but it really depends on what habits I want to track because the habits that go on here are supposed to be related to my goals so once I do my goal review at the end of the month then I'll be able to say like okay well what actions am I doing on a daily basis because those are the things that go on the habit tracker if that kind of makes sense. <laughs> So it's like there, there are a couple steps that need to be done, but I'm kind of thinking that habit tracking like this probably isn't what I want for February, but we'll see. This one's going all good for our Facebook page. I didn't post anything today, I don't think. And Facebook group, I didn't post anything. And YouTube community. I mean, like, we're doing a live, so I think it counts. Technically, this is related to my community tab, not to, like, my just video stream stuff, but it's fine. I like the record of the fact that it happened. Actually, we do need to fill something else in on the yearly collections, though, so not yet. So my reflection page, I have been kind of slowly filling in as I've been going through, because I thought it would just be nice to not have to do it all at the end of the month, honestly. My memory's kind of poor. <laughs> if I don't fill things in in the moment, I typically don't fill them in. So I figured that if I did it as I went through, it'd just be a little bit easier. So things that I have noted as wins were my action list getting populated before the January started. So that's good. Getting storage solutions for my office. Oh my gosh, guys, this has been the longest running project ever. And I am so flippant happy <laughs> because my stuff actually has spaces to live now. And there is going to be a video coming for that. I'm not sure when. It will be here, but probably sometime within the next month. Like, you know, if we get to the end of February and it hasn't happened, then I will feel like failure, but probably not. I think it's going to happen like early Feb is the plan at least. So made a new patron tracker. That was cool. That was a pentagonal tracker, which I thought was pretty, pretty snazzy. Um, pentagonal tracker is like surprisingly difficult to make because I do everything in Photoshop and like the dimensions on a on a pentagon are a little bit harder to work with so I'm feeling good about it. Challenges haven't written any down yet though that they they have notably happened but I haven't really had any that were like oh god I really need to write this down in the moment but we'll do that eventually. Improvements that one's something to reflect on at the end of the month. Memories we have the Yumcha and movie date with Vogel. I can also probably note down a couple more so my, my nifty pencil case with all of my badges. It's very cute. Eh. If I could get it open though, it is so stuffed with pens. <laughs> like, because I've been using what this one for the five year journal, this one's for Vogel's journal, this one, this one, this one, this one, and a bunch of others are for January setup. But then we've also got 
ones for my content planner in here and stuff as well. So it's all just kind of stuffed in here. A little washi tape. A little washi tape. Put all of those back. Beautiful. I'm glad that you could catch the live, Stella. It's one of those, like, I know that it's a very inopportune time for some people, but I'm glad that the people who are here, it was a good time for you. <laughs> so, memories. We'll use our dot pen to mark them in. What? I was one I was literally just thinking of. Oh, yeah, Spooky Movie Night. That was fun. So, every... Friday 13th, regardless of what month it is, my friend Rachel and I try to have a spooky movie night, usually with our friend Scotty, depending on if he's free. So, spooky movie night. And this time around we watched two movies. We watched Hereditary and 13 Ghosts. And, like, 13 Ghosts was one of those movies that, like, every time I'd see it at, like... <laughs> and dating myself, video store, like Blockbuster or whatever, anytime I'd see it there, I would, I, it looked really scary. Like the, the cover of the like video, DVD, whatever, always, always looked scary to me. And then I saw the movie and I was like, okay, this really isn't that bad. <laughs> like, oh, Julia, you caught it too. Glad that you are here. Yeah, Jessica, 1am, definitely a late live. Yeah, 1am. Oh my God. Let's make good choices about your bedtime. Don't let me keep you up. <laughs> But I'm glad you're here. Spooky movie night with Rachel and Scotty. Nice. And we have a zoo date planned for later in the month, but that hasn't happened yet, so I'm not going to fill it in. There was something else I was meaning to fill in here, but I can't remember what it was, so I'm going to leave it for now. But I might remember. The finances section I can't fill in yet because that is a review at the end of the month type thing. We have the journaling, which, as I mentioned before, inconsistent ways of checking off trackers. That has been something that has bothered me. So I know when I'm planning February, I need to think about that before I start filling in my trackers. Because what? I have one of these. Yeah, I originally crossed off this one here. And then that bothered me. So I started doing ticks instead. But I'm just like, oof. And I think I did that on the monthly. Yeah, I crossed this one off. And I'm like, no, that kind of just looks like I didn't attend the thing. So I turned that into a tick as well. Clonk. I don't know if you can hear the background noise of Vogel going in and out of his office. <laughs> Duckies, indeed. There we go. So... That one's looking good. Fill in most of this stuff at the end of the month, though. And then we're on to what I labeled as a brain dump, but then just turned into daily logs. I was mentioning this before, like, I think maybe yesterday or something. I can't remember. At some point. That when it came to the new year, it was, like, really in my head about the idea of, like, okay, we're going to, we really want to, like, hit the ground running for this year. We want to make the perfect weekly that's really going to help us, like, get all of the things done. We're going to have all of the things checked off. It's going to be awesome. So we need to design the perfect weekly spread that can actually make that happen, which is a ridiculous notion. I put way too much pressure on myself. So, of course, I got to January and I'm just like, oh, my God, you don't even have your weekly set up. What are we going to do? Like, okay, we'll just... We'll just write down, like, a, a brain dump, and then we'll go from there. We'll pick it up on Monday. But, of course, then the brain dump was only this long. And I'm like, yeah, okay, we're not going to waste this much of a page just so that you can do a, uh, a weekly spread that fits this incredibly high standard you've set for yourself. Absolutely ridiculous. So instead, I've decided to do daily logging, it seems, which has actually been going really well. It's been kind of nice. Darkness Falls is one that I'm pretty sure that my friend, when I was, like, at school, when it, like, came out, I'm pretty sure my friend said that, like, I don't know, oh, my God, my scariest movie ever, you have to see it, rah, 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 kind of thing, and then I never did. So it's it's on the list. It's probably one that I should see. You know, let's write it down. That's a good idea because otherwise I'll say that I should see it and then I'll forget. So put that into my um, long-term collections journal here where I keep my list of things that I'm supposed to watch at some point. So... This is Darkness Falls. <laughs> I'm currently using what, the Pilot Juice Pen, which is a little bit more fluid 
than I'm used to. It's a little bit like, you know, it's got a longer drying time, effectively. Uh, so just dab that just nicely with my blotting finger. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Haven't seen a lot of scary movies. But I don't remember one where you were actually scared. So, oh, smile. I really want to see that. And I know that you probably literally just saw it on my list. But yeah, I want to I wanna see that. I want to see, like, the thing is, is that with scary movies, I just can't watch them by myself. <laughs> Even coming home from my, um, you know, spooky movie night, which was at my mate Scotty's place, coming home from that and then having to come into my house where it was like one o'clock in the morning and nobody was up and everything was like dark and quiet. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm going to die, which is not ridiculous, just ridiculous. But <laughs> I let my, my imagination get the better of me a lot of the time. Let's see. Oh, homemade cookies. That's so cool. I want to make cookies off. Mm. Alrighty, so we've got the continuation of the daily logs because that's what happened. I decided that for, which week is this? Yeah, so this was the first week of January. I decided that for the second I was getting a little bit irritated about not having a meal log, so I put a meal log in for myself. Like it was technically kind of like half meal log, half meal planner, but I actually filled it out and tiny round of applause for me we actually ate all of our planned dinners for this week, which has not happened in many moons. Many moons have passed since we ate all of our pre-planned meals. So that was very good. I've also been putting my weekly reflections just in the daily log space as well. So this was the reflection for week one, just writing out my wins, my challenges, and things that I was thinking about for my bullet journal. It's nice to have this stuff down here. Ooh, question regarding 101 things. No idea what to put there no absolutely not stupid totally fair I mean it's one of those things that like because it's a, essentially a goals list I have to stop myself from thinking that everything on there has to be like a big ticket thing um because if I put 101 big ticket things then I'm just gonna completely overwhelm myself it's gonna be a disaster so I have like a mixture of bigger things and a mixture of smaller things a mixture of things that are like uh, something that I want to try, something that I want to buy, something that I want to do, like those kind of things. There's also absolutely no pressure to fill it completely up like this early into the year. I got to something like August last year and I only had 60 things on my list. So I did a little kind of brainstorm when chatted to Vogel and like got the rest of the list filled out. But like, no, it's only what, halfway through January you do not have to have this list even halfway filled <laughs> a lot of mine came from like ones that I didn't do last year so having what 65 66 items on here is in part because of that so yeah, but I have been getting things done which is good so like getting a living space story solution we took the bookshelf out of my office and put it down there so now that's actually got some stuff on it and Things, things can live in a space that isn't, you know, totally awful. <laughs> and then we got the making of the new Patreon tracker, like the printable. Wrote a letter to myself for 2024 just to open. Soft finishing my office organization is happening. And I'm, I'm glad also that I worded it as soft finish. Because if it was just finish my office organization, that would again become one of those really high pressure tasks that's like, oh my gosh, you like have to have it perfect. It has to be amazing. Everything has to have like the exact place that it's going to have forever and always. Like, mm, no, don't need that. Don't need that kind of pressure. One of them was just to get a library card. I got my library card. It arrived yesterday. I mean, how much will I use it? Hopefully more than my last library card. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But I've already downloaded, like, the little apps and stuff like that, so that's exciting. Any tips on not letting your 2323s as a challenge? Oh, okay, fair. If it helps, like, if we just flip back for a second, my 2323s from last year ended up like this. And I am absolutely not sad about it. <laughs> like, it's one of those things that it just helps me if you think about it more like a learning opportunity rather than like a rah-rah, fight the power, have to do all the things, it, it can be a little bit more low pressure. So, for instance, one of the things that I learned about myself from doing this this way, let's see if you can read what they are. There we go. I'll put it this way so it might be a little easier. 
Like, ones that I actually got done were movies watched, TV shows watched, uh, no food out days, which I did all in January when my motivation was really high, or at least the majority of them. Um, social outings got close, but no cigar. And then $100 saved. So things that I learned about myself from this. One, I love saving in really big chunks of money. <laughs> I don't like doing teeny tiny savings. So I did do all of my $100 saved in January, mainly because like the first paycheck that I had come in, I put like all of it into my savings and then just lived frugally for a little bit. I know that that's obviously not possible <laughs> for some people, but at that point in time, I was living off two incomes. Like I had my teaching stuff and my YouTube stuff. So it wasn't um, too much of a struggle there. I learned that in January, my motivation is way higher because, you know, it's that whole fresh start feeling, like really getting into the whole like new year, new me, blah, blah stuff, which, you know, no, new year, same me, slightly better. Uh, TV shows watched took me longer than movies. So I have noted that like I have a preference for watching movies over TV shows, but like I didn't do any two liter water days. Like for the entire of last year, I had no day that I drank at least two liters of water in that one day. So something I learned is that that goal for me is way too high. So if I want to build a water like intake goal, it needs to be way smaller than that. Like literally, if it was just like have one cup of water a day, that would have been way more sensible because honestly, I don't know how many of those I had last year because my drink of choice is Coke Zero, a tink. Oh no, it's empty. <laughs> but thankfully, uh -huh, I bought a spare. Anyways, so I hope that that helps. But it's like we're using this as an opportunity to like either have fun or like get better in little increments and stuff like that. If it helps, you could always try and map out like when you want to have certain milestones, I guess you could say. Yeah, be nice to yourself. Always be nice to yourself. Um, because if we think about it, like last year was 22, like what's 22 divided by 12? A bad number, something smaller than two. Realistically, you only have to do two of these every month to, to hit your target kind of a thing. So if you think about it as like, okay, I want to do two of this, two of this, two of this, two of this, like wherever it's possible, then maybe set that as the goal rather than, hey, I'm going to do all 23 of the things in the first, what, 31 days? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because let's see, if we go to my current one, just like I said, I like to save in big increments. I don't like to save in little bits and little bits. So my, my $100 saved 23 times is already done. Um, that has been put aside in my no touch this money, saving for a rainy day, whatnots. I've already watched four movies. Like I'm making progress on the ones that I find to be easier. But yeah, don't don't put too much pressure on yourself. But also like... I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with making heaps and heaps of progress when you do have high motivation to make heaps of progress. Uh, what's a way to word this that doesn't sound weird? <laughs> yeah, like if you're if you have a high motivation kind of period, then totally lean into that. Just make sure that you don't do it at the expense of future you. Like you don't want to lean so hard into your motivation that you completely burn yourself out and then, you know, future you just can't do anything for like way longer than they would have been able to do things for, you know, not doing that. This was poorly worded. Hopefully it makes sense. I was also reading at the same time. So now I'm just confusing myself. <laughs> if you were a stack of sticker paper, where might you be hiding? Probably under something <laughs> or in plain sight, just blending like on a white desk if I was white sticker paper. That's where I would hide. it. <laughs> Your February spread has an accidental Midsommar theme. Ooh, I haven't seen it, but I, I want to see it. Anywho, we're going to put this guy away because we've done the thing. Oh, no, wait. Before we put him away, because he's here, we're doing a live stream. We can take that one off. Yay! First live stream of the year. <laughs> the office is too full. <laughs> There we go. So live streaming. That one is here. And it is January 16th. Boom. Progress. Yeah. But like fun progress. 
Because that's the thing. Most of the stuff that I have on here is enjoyable in some way. So it's all good. Anyway, put that off. So for instance, like I set myself one liter water days. It is going to be a stretch to get 23 of those before the end of the year. But I'm feeling positive. I mean, technically, to keep on top of, what, 20, 23. That's roughly one every two weeks for 52 weeks. 52 weeks. Bad at math. Yeah, roughly one every two weeks. Anyhow, so meal logging went well. Weekly logging, all the good stuff. So I put myself in a little, like, office project list. Um, but the nice part is, is that because I'm doing this daily logging thing, I've just been tucking these little bits and pieces in amongst all of the rest of the stuff. So, like, daily, daily, office project list, daily weekly review, meal log, and then more daily logging. I have given myself a couple of extra pages. So I've just set them up with the little duck decorations. I haven't put the little bubble pieces in yet, but um, I'll get there eventually. And then I have where we're going to do February in theory. I think that this should be enough space, but before I even look at touching this space with pencil, we do actually have to plan out what I want to do for February, which was the general purpose of this stream that we are now almost 40 minutes into. <laughs> Hello from the Netherlands. Hello. Did you also sell your 23, 23, and 23 spread at some point? Yeah, you could do that. But also, like, you've been doing your friend's reading journal. That's awesome. How's the A5 feeling? Oh, it's like coming home after a long trip and you just, like, put all of your bags down and just don't unpack it and just collapse into a happy heap of like, yay, my space. <laughs> I loved the B6. It was so cute. And I really loved getting to like be decorative in there because it just felt a lot more low pressure because, you know, there was less space to deal with. And I really liked the B5 in the fact that I could write heaps and heaps and heaps in there especially in um, August when I was doing the kind of like very stripped back bullet journal method adjacent kind of stuff. But I, uh, I do like this size. I'm eager to try other sizes for our other journals we're going to use this year, but I do like A5s. Let's see. Ooh, good way to use up the mountains of washi tape you have. That's a great question. I also would like an answer to that because I have, I'm not going to say too much because I think that it could be a comfortable amount. It just needs a light amount of decluttering. And I think that's what our next live stream is going to be, is me decluttering my washi tape. Alrighty, team. Time for spoilers. But boom. My theme for February is the periodic table in celebration of periodic table day. So we need to do some planning. Planning. We need to do some planning about my spreads. And then kind of just like aesthetic elements and a color palette and stuff like that. But I'm going to start with spreads because in theory, it's the easiest one to start with. Do you think you'll pick up a Travelers for the Notebook this year or a Square? Yes. And yes. <laughs> the plan is to do one of both. I don't know which one's first though. Do you guys have a preference? Like, do you want to see the Square more? Do you want to see the Travelers more? Do we want to see like the Square for the middle of the year? Or would we rather have the Square for like the end of the year? I know that the problem that I had with my beautiful little B6 was that he didn't have enough space to do four months in with the way that I like to journal because he had less pages. I think that's the same idea as like the Travelers. Travelers has less pages, so I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm considering possibly that I would use the square first. I think it's probably the one that I'm like more eager to try at the moment, but I, I feel like it might be nice to finish the year in a square, so I'm conflicted. <laughs> Maybe we should, we should have a poll, right? Let's see, we're like, going to go dude poll. I totally forgot to end our poll from before. So that was a whoops. <laughs> my, my, my bad. Alrighty, I'm going to have to do the types, which means we're going to need the keyboards. Oof. Alrighty. So we press the button and we press to start a poll. Who to use first? And we go, war and travelers. And then we, it's like, Neither. <laughs> there we go. Those are the options. When you can see it, you should vote in the poll 
Obviously, you're here on the replay. I apologize. You can't vote in the poll, but you can let me know in the comments. Like, what do you think I should use first? You think I should use the square first or the travelers? Or you're like, nah, log JK, just go back and use the B5 again. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, the votes are coming in. We've got 22 votes so far. It's a, it's a tough race. The travelers is winning slightly. It's a 58%. Oh, who's going to who's gonna pull through at the end? I could not be a sports commentator, but I like to pretend that I could be a sports commentator. <laughs> this is really, really even in terms of the voting. I'm going to leave it there. We're going to plan out what I want to do for my spreads, though. So when I write this in, I do typically like to write it in, like, a rough order that I'm going to put it into the journal. But, you know, it's, it's better written down than it is perfectly organized, like most things that I do. So projects list first makes sense. Because it is, you know, that, that like opening spread, we have the projects and we have the cover page. So projects list and cover page. Those ones are staples, as is the monthly log. So just in case you haven't seen this page before, this is effectively a place that I get to not necessarily plan, but like write out my plans for any monthly setup. So each of the little boxes are there to swatch out my color palette for the month. We have a little space to write out like aesthetic notes. I don't like the word aesthetic. It sounds low-key pretentious, <laughs> but um, it's just kind of a way to tell me or remind me, I suppose, of how I want to design things from like style points. So we've got that. I've got couple of notes so I want to do stuff like stained paper scientific notes and elemental symbols which makes sense because we're going with a periodic table uh, we've got the spreads list which are the different layouts that I want to include so I've called it spreads really it should be called layouts because not all of these are going to take up a double page for instance the projects list is just one page as is the cover page and then I also like to map out what kind of font or lettering I'm using just so that then I kind of keep things cohesive as I set up all of the pages. Find that like if you change the font on every page or every second page or whatever, things don't tie together as nicely. And I am much more inclined to use my journal if things are tied together. Yeah. All right, let's go back and check our poll. Oh my gosh, it's still neck and neck. I'm literally just going to have to leave it up. <laughs> We'd like to use a square notebook as a reading journal. Oh, I would like a reading journal. I don't have, I don't need a reading journal, not a proper one. I've already started another journal this year, you know. <laughs> like, I started the year, I'm like, okay, these are my 10, I'm doing it, and it's going to be, going to be like, this is it, and I've already got another one, so now I'm at 10, 10 journals. Vintage science or steampunk? Um, That's a good question. I'm thinking what I realistically want to do. This is what I wanted to do last time I did the science theme, but I didn't do it. I used gel pens and me and gel pens are like nemesi. Is that what nemesis is? is? Like when you have two people who are nemesi? Is nemesi a word? I'm going with it. So the nemesi, me and the gel pen, head to head, fight. But um, yeah, that's what I wanted to do last time I was doing a periodic table or sciencey theme. I wanted it to be very like old school science kind of like notes scrapbooky kind of thing but that didn't happen so i'm hoping that that's what i can achieve this time we will see oh gosh it's 2 45 a.m you're debating joining the planning or just lurking until you pass out again make good choices <laughs> don't hurt yourself don't stay up just because we're here you can watch watch in later and stuff things and words secret word never sigh yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed the secret words. I thought they were fun. I think the word is nemesis is. Oh, that's just lame. I like nemesi. <laughs> Close the coke. Ah, oh, what a satisfying noise. Ding. Always be careful when using drinks near your planner because it can end poorly. We don't want that for us. <laughs> nemesis is. That's awful. <laughs> One nemesis. Two nemesis. Nemesi. <laughs> Viva la chaos. We need sleep. <laughs> okay, so we have projects, cover, and monthly. I'm going to want my actions list, and I'm going to want to populate it before February actually starts because it has been so helpful. 
when I actually populate it before the month starts. Ah! All right, actions list. That looks great. And I'm going to want a reflection page because I like having my reflection pages and I like actually filling them in. And I found that since doing the uh, monthly resets on camera, that has really helped make sure that I fill in my uh, reflection pages. So yay for us. Yay for reflection pages. 11.45 here in California. See, that's I think our next pilgrimage to the US is going to be to the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Square is winning by 1%, is it? Alrighty, let's go see. Oh, it's by 2% now, at least on my end. I don't know. 43% square, 41% travelers, 16% neither go back to B5 lol. <laughs> Thankfully, we have plenty of time, in, in theory, until I need to change over. Because what, we're at January, say. January finishes here. Okay. So this much is the start of the journal in January, and this is how much we have left. So I think we'll probably fit, yeah, February, we're yay much, and then March, and then, yeah, we're, we're gonna get at least to the end of April in here, I reckon, unless I do something crazy. It is a different one to usual. This is the Pilot Juice 0 0.5. 0 0.5, yeah, Pilot Juice, it's got a clicky thing, like, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing comes close to the Golden Coast. Is that is the Golden Coast the, the West? I have no idea. Oh well, it is in the song California Girl, so it would make sense if it was the West. <laughs> but yes, that is the next plan. The next the next trip to the US, whenever that may be, it is planned to be the West Coast. There we go. Back to my planning. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so projects list, yep, cover, monthly, actions, reflection. I like having the book club tracker in here just for no other reason than I like to kind of like track my progress, which means I'm going to have to look up how much, how much, how many chapters there are. We did decide our book club book today, though. Our book club book for next month February is Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Julie Smith. Yeah. Dr. Julie Smith. Dr. Julie Smith. Though on her book it just says Julie Smith. That's why I just say Julie Smith. Book Club Tracker. And I would like to plan it better than I did this time. Oregon. Oregon is also on the West Coast. West Coast is the best coast. <laughs> Uh, see, I just, I, I'm very, um, geographically challenged when it comes to, I mean, pretty much anywhere, like even New Zealand. <laughs> so I'm like, oh yeah, Ohio, oh, Ohio is the dream. Murphy, Ohio is the dream. We have to go to Ohio so that we can go to Cleveland. <laughs> That's like the top of my want to travel to list. Cleveland. I liked my Instagram schedule, so we're going to put one of those in. Instagram schedule. And I'm going to call it the Instagram schedule, even though it has other stuff on there too. It's actually just been very helpful. Because another thing that has been very helpful has been at the front here, wherever you are. There we go. This is like my, um, I don't know what this is called. <laughs> Uh, my, like, kind of mapped out schedule for all of my content, effectively. So, oh, that was supposed to come out tomorrow, but I put it out today. Whoops. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just ahead. It's all good. Would you go to Canada? Um, yes, I would certainly go to Canada. Oh, Travelers is winning by 1% now. Fight. <laughs> I would love to go to Canada. I think Canada looks absolutely gorgeous. As long as as long as I go somewhere where it is less likely that I get, like, attacked by a moose. Because I'm very afraid of moose. Meese? Mooses. I'm afraid of them. Because <laughs> they're just, like, in my mind, I know that they're bigger than horses. But, like, I just don't remember that. And then I see a picture of one and I'm like, oh, my God. What the heck is that? <laughs> like, it's a house. It's a house with legs. <laughs> I'm so worried. 
I'm also low key afraid of the ocean though. So like, you know, that works well for having lived in two completely surrounded by ocean countries. But yeah, Canada looks awesome and I would love to go there. Self-care tracker slash habit tracker. I'm going to have some kind of tracker of that description. Self-care habit tracker. Because that has been very motivating. And I also like the, the kind of combination of having the daily stuff on there and the monthly. I mean, kangaroos are kind of scary, but also they usually hip hop away from you. Like as long as you don't get close, they're like not that aggressive, right? <laughs> I think it's probably one of those things that like you're, the things that you're used to seem less scary in a way, except spiders. Like those still scare me. I don't, I don't like the spiders. <laughs> Self care habit tracker sounds good. Reflection list. Is this like all of the same things? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. I guess. Is there anything else that I want to include? I don't think so. Yeah. They're probably less aggressive than hippos, but hippos are cute, right? <laughs> yeah, they hip hop away. <laughs> like, just like that. <laughs> I don't know. Kangaroos are like tanky as, though. I, I remember my grandparents, like, they, um, because they live essentially in the wafts. Um, so they, I mean, I, I would say that they hit a kangaroo, but it's more like they got hit by a kangaroo because the kangaroo, like, jumped into the side of their ute and then completely munched up their door. Like, they had to replace that completely. So, you know, kangaroos are tanks. Uh, what am I looking for in here? I'm looking for ideas for monthly layouts. And I don't think there's anything in particular that I want to put in, but just in case there is, I thought we'd have a look. So this is another beautiful collection that I prepared earlier in my, boom, long-term collections journal. But we have things to include in your monthly setup and things to include on a weekly layout. So monthly log we already got, themed schedules we've already got because we've got the Instagram one. Um, have a trackers, themed trackers. So technically we've got a combination of both of those because we've got the social, social get out, the self-care tracker. Yeah. Spider rob your soul. Yeah. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. I think the ones that like get me is where, where like, you, like, when you know where it is, when you can see where the spider is, it's not as bad, but it's, it's when you know, you turn away for a second and then they're gone. You're like, oh, great, <laughs> great. Now I'll just burn my house down because that's just safer than having to try and find you or you, like, jump out at me. It's like a jump scare, but, like, in real life. And I know that real life has jump scares in theory. But anyhow, so Moo Tracker, I don't really want that. Productivity log, I don't think I need either. Chores or cleaning tracker, <laughs> well, not that. Uh, monthly log for food, I don't... I think I want to do that monthly. I think that doing it on my weeklies has been more successful for me. Health log, nope. Family tracker, nope. Spending, nope. Screen time, haha, <laughs> nope. I'm fine with the amount of screen time I spend on screens. Gratitude log, I'm probably okay without. See, the thing with February is that, to be honest, it is going to be crazy. I have so much going on in February. So I don't think that I really need to put very much in here at all. So having just eight pages that I'm keeping track of, and I mean like, you know, cover page, you're not really keeping track of a cover page. It's just a cover page. But um, I think that outside of this, I probably don't need anything else. So, mm, yeah. Monthly cleaning planning we're already doing. Currently page don't need. But it's always good to have this reference. It's always very helpful. But we can put it away now because we don't need anything else. Let's see. Let's go check on the comments because I am bad at keeping track of them. Boosters in Canada are different to the ones in Sweden? Possibly. Don't know. I'm running around. Yeah. All right. We shouldn't be scared to just see them. They're still kind of a little scary. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> You like your fiance sends you after the spiders. Yeah, see, the problem is that Vogel and I are both scared of spiders, so there's nobody to send after the spiders because we're both just going to be like, mm, no, you touch it. No, I don't want to. You touch it. Mm. Well, I mean, like, we're not touching the spiders at all. I think it also doesn't help that, like, we come from, we, I, come from a place that, like, either the spiders are huge 
or they're poisonous or they're poisonous and huge. <laughs> like, there's not like a lot of spiders that don't fit into that kind of general realm. Uh, so yeah, it's a no from me. Hard pass. That's okay. Without. Thanks. <laughs> I don't, yeah. Roaches I can probably, I can deal with like them being, I can deal with being near roaches, I suppose, but it's when they catch me by surprise. Like pretty much any bug, if it catches me by surprise, I'm just like, nope. <laughs> so periodic table, aesthetic spreads, that's looking cool. Now I guess what we really need to do is go and find some inspirations online. Let's see. Let's go check out our good friend Pinterest. Ha ha ha. Mainly because I really don't know what I want to do in terms of the decoration for this outside of the idea of kind of like scientific sketching kind of stuff. <laughs> Sink you're after the spiders. Yeah, send the doggo after the spiders. So much, so much safer. <laughs> Glass and piece of paper. Yep, for spider removal. Nice. I usually just end up spraying them. I know it's not very humane, but I kind of come to the point where I'm just like, I'm going to end up causing myself way too much distress. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be like, ugh. <laughs> I love that. She eats the threat. Yeah, that's right. Attack. <laughs> so we want to do, I don't know, can we look up science bullet journal ideas? Would that work? Or I also feel like I should kind of show you guys what I'm doing. Oh, <laughs> look, mine comes up. Isn't that nice? Let's see. I know that I know how to do this. Share screen. Share window. Okay, I'm going to have to figure this out. because I, I know it's a thing that I can do. Alrighty, you guys just let me know if you can see what I see here. You can see the sciencey stuff? I hope so. I don't think you need to see me though. You can just see the computer screen like that, right? So this is what I'm playing with at the moment. Effectively, like when I go to plan my themes, if I've started with a general idea for myself, then usually I can go and find things for myself. I don't really need to worry about hitting up Pinterest and that kind of stuff. But because, you know, we're doing kind of an in-depth, I suppose, look at how I plan my bullet journal setups, I figured we'd have a look at it. So obviously, science bullet journal, like cacti, I guess, like if you're going for a like botany theme, but that's not the type of science that I'm looking for. We're looking for like chemistry related stuff for the periodic table kind of a thing. So in looking for that, I'm mainly looking for things like glassware and molecular structures. <laughs> what, what great inspiration. <laughs> Just toot my own horn here. <laughs> yeah, see, it would be totally a fun opportunity for a rainbow theme, but I specifically want to make it like old school style science sketchbook type thing. So maybe instead of science bullet journal, we should really look up like science sketchbook and hope that nothing too escondolo comes up. So <laughs> yeah, nah, I'm not going to do that. Just putting that out there. Also, it's a little bit more like the whole botany thing. Or like, what is a botany? So like, botany is a plant. Biology. Obviously, I've been out of the teaching game for too long because I can't even remember what types of science there are. So like, I love the look of anatomy sketches. I think they look really cool. This is a discount book, though. I'm not going to be buying this. But again, that doesn't really fit with the whole periodic table thing. So we're mainly looking for more like glassware so like science glassware sketches and like molecular structure sketches that kind of stuff so it's a probably a pretty good point and then we just go and here we go we can press on this yeah. ah see what an excellent idea here we go oh look at the chemical structure for coca-cola <laughs> yeah search vintage chemistry drawings this is this is all good very ideas yes good very See, we could do Spider-Man. Nothing related to this. Come on, Pinterest. What are you doing? So, um, what, what was one of the ones that we suggested? Vintage chemistry drawings. All right. I like that idea. That says vintage, but hopefully it understood me. It seems it understood me. But, ah, that's cute. This is very cute, but it's not quite what I'm looking for. This kind of thing is more 
akin to what I'm looking for. I like those kind of like lots of little line work kind of bits. Like, ooh, that's so cute. That's so cute. <laughs> like, yeah, molecule of caffeine. Yes. Because which one did I think I did dopamine when I did my last one? Was one of the ones I did. I also drew out serotonin, I think. Because that was the one that was like big and at the bottom of my page. I don't think I have like a reference picture nice and handy to show you guys. Maybe when we come back to the actual me, question mark. Not my computer screen. We can have a look at that. Ooh, that's cute. That's cute. See, I love this kind of like, just like a collection of all of them kind of sitting together kind of thing. So I'm kind of thinking old school glassware and then like, you know, history of the atom type stuff and all of that kind of thing. Yeah, like blueprint style would be super cool. I think that'd be really awesome. So I'm thinking something like along those lines, like <laughs> anything that has like the chalkboard with all of the kind of like, I don't know, you guys get what I mean, right? Like this kind of aesthetic, but a bit more like browns. So like coffee stain, tea stain, paper kind of thing. How will I do this in my journal? Je ne sais pas, but I will be trying it. I just don't want to get tea or coffee all over my journal because that would not be the business. <laughs> all right, I'm going to skid it all back to here. Thank you. Do you wish styling my home? No, I'm good. I'm My home's fine. See, this is very cute, but it isn't. It isn't quite what I'm looking for. Don't need, don't need another, you know, that's very unsafe. She doesn't know what's in here. She doesn't have any of her safety gear on. In fact, I'm pretty sure she's naked. So you know, put the clothes on, lady. My boy. But yeah, so, ooh, ah, see, like little sketchy bits. I love this. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. Ooh, no, I feel like I need to actually make a board, but I'm just kind of like browsing, perusing, looking through like all of this kind of stuff. Aggressive Bunsen burner is aggressive. Anywho, so I am going to go and grab my old journal so I can kind of show you guys what I mean by like my old setup. If we, how do we stop screen? I know how do we do this. I know how do we do this. That's not English. Anywho, I will be right back. Like, you're gonna use brown pen on top of the tea stain paper. I think that like for background stuff, I probably could because I do have a. Crack, 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 crack. To clarify, I don't have crack. I have a brown micron. So I thought that like if I drew over the top of the tea stain paper with the brown micron, then it kind of like blends in, which would be kind of like a nice, nice look for anything that's like background imagey background energy yeah that's what I meant um so that's what I was kind of thinking with that but if we skidoodle this cheeky boy out of the way goodbye my good friend and we bring in opa, this one ha 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 from from 2020 when Jess tried the Neapolitan and it went super well <laughs> this is when I did my last science theme so if you've been here a, a hot minute or if you've watched the back catalog you will remember this setup um, so this was the last time I did a science theme and I really liked that it was on, like it was already on the craft paper. So it was like perfect opportunity to do the whole sketchy vibes thing, but I didn't, I didn't do it. I just didn't either have the time or inclination or something. So we have our little test tubes for July looking cute. We had like our separating funnel so we were kind of entering the territory of the kind of sketchy stuff but didn't fully happen because you can see we also started including rainbow elements i say we i do mean me myself and i we had oxytocin here so that was like a nice little kind of corner decoration piece with the kind of chemical structure which is cute and then we had three dopamine molecules for my mood tracker so you can see like this guy here is one of them and then these two aren't joined so there's another one and then these two aren't joined and then there's another one my habit tracker was just a regular kind of habit tracker and then regular steps tracker which i did not end up filling out it's kind of hard to see the orange one which was also one of the things that i was like eh, about with the idea of doing rainbow gel pen on top of the craft paper we had a little dispersion diagram down the bottom here so that was all good I think part of the reason this didn't really get used is because we went away during July as well. 
we had a productivity tracker, and then we had the weeklies. So I thought that these were kind of cute, and I'd like to do something like this as part of the drawing. So like we can do kind of like old school atom drawings and stuff like that. We kind of cute. And then we had what this what what this <laughs> we had mitosis but that's more biology than it is chemistry so we will not be including mitosis again and then the next weekly i had was done with the elemental kind of like symbol things and i wanted each of these to be ones that were like named after a person yeah <laughs> sorry it gives me jimmy neutron vibes yeah i know right like little new 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 <laughs> So this one was kind of cute. I liked that we had like obviously elemental symbols in here. So I was thinking like I could use those for decoration. So I thought that would kind of work. And then the last weekly for this one was actually done in the back because I wanted it to be on craft. So that one is here. But that was just really basic, really kind of simple kind of stuff. So that's not really what I'm what I'm thinking. That's not the vibe for this setup. It's more akin to the stuff that we had up here. So like this guy and this guy and then like the glassware kind of stuff that we had from eh, this guy. Yeah. So I like those kind of elements and I'm thinking of like effectively doing those but with more detail. So to make it a little bit more sketchy is the idea. But let's skadoodle him away. Goodbye, fair old planner. Hello, new old planner. So yeah, paste in tea ripped or ripped tea stain paper. So I was thinking of something like that, but I kind of, does that look rainbow to you? Because it looks rainbow to me. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, I was kind of thinking like I could possibly dye the pages of my notebook. I'm just not sure how I would do it. Because um, I was kind of thinking like, I, I watched a couple videos. Um, I say a couple. I'm pretty sure it was one. Doesn't matter. I watched a video about tea staining paper and they did it by like effectively painting the paper with a tea bag or like with a coffee bag or something like that. And I'm like, well, if I do it that way, then I have a bit more control over where stuff goes. So I could just put like something behind this page to protect the page underneath it and same idea on the other side. And then or I could use distress oxide ink. That's also a really good idea. Let's see. See, Denise knows things. Um, what colours do I have? Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> so here we go. We've got the distress oxide inks, but I don't... The thing the thing about the Tombow is that um, if I use a Tombow, it's going to be really streaky. If I use the distress oxide, though, it's going to be distinctly less streaky. Um, or the tea dye. But... In terms of colours, like I've got all my bright ones on top, so I'll just <laughs> move those out of the way. Yeah, I'm thinking that like that's also a possibility. Is like I don't want my journal to stink, <laughs> or in particular, I don't want my journal to go mouldy. Um, is is probably the bigger issue. You can see that I put stuff on top of this so that then it wouldn't stain stuff. <laughs> Struggles. So I've got vintage photo and walnut stain so in theory one of those could work let's see just put put me distress oxides over here because i really do not want to stain my desk that would be a really great idea said nobody ever so walnut stain and vintage photo which have technically both been used i think when i originally swatched them out or something but we'll grab those and we'll grab a dabber and we'll put that over there. We will not be doing that in here. We will get something else to do this on. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah, tea dye is a milk and brown. Yeah. Um, there we go. Here we go. So this guy. Ugh is my um <laughs> was my goals journal and then turned into my content planner for all of about half a month and then i decided i didn't like it being in the middle and then turned into an r d journal where we have things like the tabs video where we made like different types of tabs so alphabet tabs and then like top tabs 
and we also made little tab habit tracker kind of things. Ding, 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 ding. Will you share a list of all the colors of the Distress Oxide you have? They're so beautiful. Yeah, I can do that. Um, I mean, if you want to go through them right now. <laughs> no, we, we've got what? The worn lipstick one. That one was a really pretty one. I used the worn lipstick and the spiced marmalade together when I did, um, which one was it? The October theme from 2019, I think, was okay. Um, that one was really cool. That was for breast cancer awareness. So it was like pink ribbon and things like that. Um, but I can probably write out a proper list and give them to you. But yeah, so these, these little tabs were from a tabs video as well. That was cute. But what we're actually here to do <laughs> is swatch out this ink and see what we can do. Obviously, this journal has just got an eclectic mix of stuff. So, ugh. so this is the vintage photo. We'll see what that one looks like. I haven't used these in such a long time. <laughs> it has been a hot minute. It's also the kind of thing that, like, I know that when you put this onto the page, like, you have to be careful not to get, um, like, those ring kind of shapes. I know there are different kind of brushes that you can use to avoid stuff like that, but it's like I want to kind of like build up a color in some areas and not all of them um, without having all of these like little rings of circular motion and stuff. But this might actually be a really good strategy rather than using actual tea dye because it's not going to make my pages wrinkle, which is going to be really cool. And then because they're the Distress Oxide inks, you can also add water and it like kind of um, does like a reaction quote quote which gives you more of that kind of like vintage old kind of look to it as well which would be kind of cool so it's like I could put all of this down on the paper and then use some water to kind of react with it I don't have blotting paper I do have water oh wait I have blotting paper okay so <laughs> I have like a toilet roll with one piece of toilet paper on it I think that counts as blotting paper, right? Okay, the reason that I have a very small amount of toilet paper in my office is because I changed over my Scentsy, um, like my wax melter, um, or Max, War Max Warmer, whatever, you get it. Um, <laughs> I did that earlier today, and uh, I spilt some on the actual, like, hot plate, so I had to, had to clean it up. So I bought toilet tissue in here because that's what was closest effectively anywho so now as we've got that down Ugh, crap we also have little spray bottle which i think that like you can spray it but i find that it gets like too much water in one place so i'm like eh. Eh. okay there we go and eh, nah, let it do the reacting i don't know if you guys can tell from that angle but it is ever so slightly like changing color and you can see kind of like that pattern of moisture moisture that we have on the page and then if we just dab it off it's probably just going to be take up some of that surface see isn't that cool i think that this would actually possibly work a lot better <laughs> than doing the tea staining because I just don't have to worry about the pages getting too wet and then like curling. Yeah? So that's one of the colors we've got. It's cool, eh? It's really cool. So just dab that out because I <laughs> don't really want that all over my stuff. I always kind of get nervous about taking it off though because I don't want to rip them and I also don't want to get ink all over my fingers. Oh, the eternal struggle of people who actually use ink, which is not typically me. Okay, we're good. It's really not that bad. I'm just being a bit of a bar, bit of a bit of a biscuit. There we go. So our vintage photo is done. Fossilized amber is really yellow. Um, if you're talking about this one, this one's a lot more vibrant of a color. I we can swatch it out, but like you can kind of see it here, like it's yellow, yellow, um, as opposed to um, a more like subdued 
mustard, like low mustard. It's like aggressive mustard. Um, so this one is the walnut stain, which I probably shouldn't have left upside down for as long as I did, but I did that. So here we are. Can you mix them? Um, technically, yeah, you can kind of like lay them over the top of each other. Like we could have a look at that, but it's not, um, it's not a like easy thing to blend, I think, but we'll try. Let's put it that way. Okay. I'll put this one out. I don't think this one is as kind of like warm a brown from memory, but uh, it's actually not too bad. They actually feel fairly similar. So you can kind of see those rings. We need to like buff it out. Buff it out, buff it out, buff it out. But I also don't like, I don't mind having some rings. Let's put it that way. So I'd put like one maybe here and then you can do like another splotch of, <laughs> splotch of brown yeah it's like kind of like chemical reaction kind of thing it's it looks like you know you get your color changes going and stuff with your different chemical mixtures so but i like the variation in the shade i guess i like that you'd have like some dark areas and some light areas and then some areas that have like quite good contrast because you'll have like parts that have reacted and the colors kind of like come off of that and then areas where the color is a bit more saturated like right next to it so mm, 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 buff it out buff it out buff it out i would in doing this um probably only do one of them on camera and do the rest of them off camera because it would take me a little while um and i would probably end up having to Ugh. Oh, that one sounded bad. I don't even know if you guys heard it, but it was bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking at some very, very nicotine lungs, these ones. <laughs> so we'll put that there. I can't remember what I was saying, so it must not have been important. But should we try and blend it before I put the oxide on it too? That one has ink on its corner for some reason. Buff, buff, buff. See, the nice part about this ink in particular is that it really sits on top of the paper it doesn't really like soak into the paper in the same way that a kind of regular ink would which i kind of like this one we pull him off and we go and put the vintage photo back on we'll see if we can do some blending yeah currently adding them to your amazon list <laughs> There we go. So, take some of that one. Because, yeah, I could use both to get some, like, color variation going. I don't know if that noise sounds as bad to you as it does to me, but it's just the Velcro pulling against itself, I promise. What is this stamp thing called? I think this is just called, like, a dabber or something. Like, it's from the same brand, if that helps. Um, what, the Jim, Jim? Tim. Tim Holtz? Tim Holtz, Distress Oxide Inks, done by Ranger. <laughs> there we go. So, we got some, we got a little bit of blend going on there. It's not too bad. Yeah, the Tim Holtz blending tool. There we go. <laughs> Bell ending, bell ending. <laughs> there we go. That looks good. So we can technically kind of buff them together and kind of get a blend. Like I have done it before. After we do the water reaction on this, I'll go get out my old journal and show you what I meant. <sighs> yes, the distress oxide range. And if you are getting these, do make sure that you get the distress oxide. You don't just get the distress ink because they are not the same thing. Um, distinctly not the same thing. There we go. We'll chuck that guy back on there. In my box, I like to keep a piece of paper so that then when the ink comes off the back of the pad, it has somewhere to go. Um, I also went and bought all of these sticky, like, Velcro dots so that I could Velcro the dabber for each of the ink pads onto the back of the ink pad. Like, it doesn't come with the Velcro on the back of it. Um... But without doing that, like, they are technically meant to stack, I think. Like, you can stack one on top of the other because it's, like, sunken in at the back. But when you put the dabber on the uh, little Velcro piece, it doesn't really do that anymore. 
<laughs> God, I've got stuff all over my fangles. I don't like it. I don't like it. So, now as that's on the page, looking super cute, we can apply our water to my finger. Because <laughs> it needs to be washed off. <laughs> Yucky. Yucky. I really do wish I had more than one piece of toilet tissue, but it's okay. That's fine. And then we can just do a little, a little spritz. Not too much. Because we want like some variation. We don't want too much. And also, if you add too much water to your page, it is going to curl up. And we don't really want that either. Like, you can just leave the water on the page. And it'll just like sit here and react and stuff. But I prefer to just dab it off because of the aforementioned, um, you know, page ripples, curling, that kind of thing. It's not really my favorite thing. <laughs> But I do like the kind of old, worn kind of texture that we end up getting with this. And if you want some larger kind of splats, instead of using the little sprayer, you can just like put some water in your hand and just kind of like flick it on. And you could technically apply the water with a paintbrush as well and do it that way instead. Like all of that will work also. I'll we'll just dab that off. But it looks pretty cool. I just have to decide how much colour I kind of want on the page, I suppose, because I still want to be able to use the page, you know, with the dot grid. And as you put this stuff on top of it, the dot grid becomes a lot harder to see. Um, so for the sake of, there we go, that's like a full spray of water. You can kind of see the difference in textures we get if we apply like smaller drops versus a more aggressive spray. <clears throat> spray. And you probably also get some kind of a difference with, you know, putting um putting the water down and leaving it to react versus dabbing it off like I am here, but I like that it gives you that kind of vintagey old aged kind of paper technique it's cute does this stain your hands badly is it hard to take off it's not hard to take off um i mean i haven't found it hard to take off it i guess like considering it reacts with the water it's pretty much water soluble so if you use you know warm water and some soap you should be fine it's not gonna <laughs> it's not like henna <laughs> oh monica's on instagram looking at wood cutting videos see that's just that's just dangerous you're gonna take up a new hobby but this is looking cute. I'm going to grab my old journal while it kind of dries to show you guys how I've used it previously. Um, because I think that'll give you maybe some more ideas of how you could, in theory, use it yourself. Oh, Velcro ASMR. I don't even know if you guys can hear that. <laughs> Let's go get in the journal. Um, that one. And this one. So, in terms of blending and buffing and all of the good, my panic. There we go. That's cute though. I like this part. I know that it's not focusing. I apologize. But there's like this part here with the kind of more condensed splatter. And then this like bigger part here, that looks pretty cool too. This is still technically a little damp, but haha, I don't care. I'm closing it and putting it away. <laughs> aggressive, Jess is aggressive. We should probably tidy up the desk before we open this, but we're not going to. So this is my journal from what, 2019? Yeah, because it was 20 before 2020. Um, so in terms of this one, I used it for, you can even see it from the side, I used it for my um, pink ribbon breast cancer month, like breast cancer's awareness, and you can see I put that on here. Now, I can see the dots through this, it might be a little hard to see on camera, but this um, I think shows up better because it was pink and orange, not brown, but this blend Actually turned out really good. So I, I guess technically speaking, yes, you can blend them and get them looking good. You just really need to buff the ever-loving heck out of them. <laughs> good buffing. 
So that one is looking pretty cute. Uh, so we have like, you know, pockets of like quite concentrated orange. Yeah, aggressive mustard. What do you buy? Aggressive Jess. So we put this one was the spiced marmalade. And you can see that's why it's got like this pink splotch on top of it. But yeah, so orange marmalade and then the worn lipstick was the one that was done with that. So these two were blended together quite nicely. I did them for like the headers and stuff like that, which was pretty cute. And had like the side panels. And then this was a Dutch door so that I only had to do it on either side. Hopefully the pink shows up okay for you guys. I feel like the orange is captured a lot more on camera but they do blend together nicely but I didn't use them on the um the weeklies. It was just for our monthly setup so that one was fun but the reason I knew how to do this was because I think I actually used it in this journal first because this is from I say I think I used it in this journal first <laughs> so uh, I used this one. This one was 2019 but like this first half of 2019 so this must have been around the time that I possibly got them. But this is where we used more of that water technique that we had before. So for February, my theme was oceans. So like under the sea kind of a thing, which is why this type of water effect would be really cool for that. So you can see that for this one, we did like the header um, with this like Atlantis font. Like oh, this, this is like a top tier theme in my personal opinion. I love this. I loved it then. I love it now. I think it's beautiful. But this one was done with the cracked pistachio, which is a lot more like of a blue green than I would really think a pistachio is, but it's fine. So beautiful. Totally love that. And the other one is broken china, which is the kind of like blue kind of color that we have here. So those two blended together, again, using like washi tape to get that like really crisp edges. Chef's kiss. This was like the reverse calendar. So before, well, technically after, but before when we looked at it, we had the internal calendar be pink. This one was masking off the entire calendar area and then doing the outside of it. So it was kind of like all over there, if that kind of makes sense. Oh, Beck is here. Hello. So we've got... That one, so under the sea theme, ocean vibes, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then again, we did those side panels, but using the kind of like oxide part of it, so like giving it a spray of water to give us that kind of underwater texture. So you might be able to see like next to the end of gratitude here, there's like some splotches there and it's all just kind of got this like speckled effect, which is just really pretty. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> to be completely fair. So that is something that I could do. But obviously for these ones, I didn't do a whole page of color. It was just a banner. And then over the top was written with like thick black marker. Um, and then in, in the January, January, get out, October one, it was mainly done on paneling for the sides. It was just like a decorative thing. Whereas for February, like for next month, I would be doing a full page of color, which if I'm doing this level of saturation is gonna be hard to use. Yeah. If I just do it like light, like some of the areas we had, it might not be too bad wherever it's gone. But I think that if I was doing a full page like this, I think that's also part of the thing that we have with like, you can see the rings here where I've kind of buffed it. Whereas on these ones, you can't see it because they're all blended together super, super well. I had you like my little ocean doodles, all of them with their little like derp smiley faces. <laughs> I don't know why it was. I just wanted all of them to have like little derpy, derpy faces. I thought they were quite cute. <laughs> so we've got like a derpy face on the cloud and on the sun and then like, a tiny one in the seaweed here that you can like barely see. <laughs> so we could do the distress oxides. They are a lot of fun to use. This was a this was a good journal. Good for experimenting and stuff and doing more decorative things. I'm still miffed about the gold paint on this because like, okay, one, the gold paint is gorgeous, but on these ones I went hardcore and really like got it filled in. On this one, it looks really patches of Hulahan from some directions and then from other directions, it kind of like catches the light and it's like not so bad. But anywho, I feel like I'm getting myself distracted, but that doesn't sound like me at all. Tink.
yeah, I could do corners. I think that like, this is possibly why I guess I wanted to do the tea staining of the paper because I thought that then it would be a lot easier to do the full page. Whereas if I do the Distress Oxide, it's going to take a lot longer. I mean, we could take a small interlude and I could go make a cup of tea and we could try this, but I also don't think I'd want to do it at my white desk. I feel like that might be a bad idea. Possibly. But, but before we had a question about what colours of Distress Oxide I had, I'm going to leave them on screen here while I go and grab <laughs> yet another journal. There we go, we'll just put them so you can actually see the names. Mm. Except for Spice Marmalade and and Broken China and Wilted Violet. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Done. I'm going to go get another journal. I'll be right back. Yeah, Coke Zero stained paper. Like, that could totally do it, but also, like, wasteful. Oh, my God. That's like the life-giving elixir. I could never. Crack, crack. Click, 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 click. through pages, but I think I've picked up the wrong journal. All right, need another one. Alrighty, so you know how before I said like, oh yeah, I must have like just gotten the Distress Oxides because I was using them and stuff. Haha, <laughs> what a lie. Because this is back in when... 2017? I got them in 2017. That's when I got them. Because this one here is the fired brick colour. And you can really see that, like, um, kind of contrast, I guess, with having, like, the dark sections and then the water splatting and just, like, ha. Ah. <laughs> this weekly gave me a lot of, like, internal happiness. I was just trying a whole bunch of, like, stuff at this point. That is done with Tombow. And I feel like it kind of gave, like, a strawberry jam effect which I wasn't really a fan of whereas this one gave more of like that kind of splattered look like this part here as we say get out of the way get out of the way get out of the way this one this part yes so that was like the buffing out to about here and then spraying so you get that really decent kind of like speckled contrast kind of thing alrighty so Tea coffee paper doesn't mold as long as you don't use old paper. Well, there is hope for me yet then. So plain most bride uses a gold pen and then use gold watercolor over it and it looked freaking perfect. Yeah. See, I can, I usually just use the gold paint, but that was the first time I'd used the gold paint. And that's why it didn't turn out as well as it could. But yeah, fired brick is actually a really nice color. It probably looks a little bit more orangey on camera than it really is, but it's actually just like a really nice kind of like, What's the word? The word that means like desaturated, not subdued. <laughs> the other one. I don't know. It's like, you know, like the full color palette where everything's like slightly less saturated. I can't remember what the word is. Hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about, but it's that. It's beautiful. So these ones are like my, <clears throat> my rainbow babies. The ones that are like, you know, aggressive mustard. This is the orange. That is the green. That is the purple. And that's the blue, for some reason. Yeah, not pastel, because pastel is usually, like, the like the pale end. Yeah, muted. Thank you. There we go. Laura's onto it. She knows the words. She's got all the things going on. So, yes. Muted is what I mean. Like, a slightly less saturated, mix in some black kind of colour. So, that's what the fired brick is. It's not an aggressive orangey red. It's a very nice muted red. Like, still got a little bit of saturated. But it's cute. All right, so we can put the Distress Oxidings away, though, in this lovely box that they actually fit really well into, <laughs> which I don't even know what this box is from, but I like to keep all of my Distress Oxiding bits together, and I keep it on my art cart. So we shall put him back onto the art cart, along with my little spray bottle. <clears throat> so that's one idea, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Did Square win the poll? Did the poll, have you guys decided that the poll is closed now and Square has won? I mean, we do have 115 votes. I think it's pretty safe to call it. So 
<laughs> oh, and as soon as I say that, somebody goes and changes their, <laughs> their uh, score. Score? Vote. Words. They escape me. I think that we can say that Square possibly did win, but it's all good. We, we can we can they have some time until we have to have a formal decision made about that. Lunch at Mr. Pilgrim, whatever that is. Don't get distracted, Jess. You're supposed to be doing things. But I think that that must have been... I would have gotten the Distress Oxiding like around this time because that was the era of like Boho Berry and she got Distress Oxiding so then I got Distress Oxiding. Yeah, it was a it was a whole thing. Did I use some in the back here? I used to use them like you can see what I do to the backs of my journals like there we go. See this is me trying them out. Did I write anything down about when I got them? No, that would have been too practical. What a mess. If you're ever worried about making a mess in your journal, just make it in the back, you know? Take the pressure off. <laughs> Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Ugh. Wise wise words from past Jess, who is just making a complete mess. But we do have a periodic table in the back here. So I can just cut this out and stick it in and then I'll be done. No, that will not that will not fly. <laughs> so going back to our plan though we can find our plan that is the wrong journal i've got like so many journals out on my desk now <laughs> that i'm just like oh, yeah, where is the one that i'm actually using here we go my good friend from cardiff wales oh in the southern hemisphere so bored of being cold well i mean open up the curtain it's pretty cold out there at the moment <laughs> like i don't know our our uh, summer has been a little bit weird like some days it's just like oh look it's raining torrentially and then some days it's just like way too warm for me. I don't deal well with hot, but I'm sorry you don't have the weather that is ideal for you. Roasting. Roasting hot. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting myself distracted again. Over here. Over here we go. Lead yourself in the right direction. So today was gross hot. Yeah, it was. I had the cooler on literally all day. <laughs> I got the cooler on right now. Last night it was awful. We, um, we went out for the day, which meant we didn't, we went upstairs, and that's where our bedroom is, upstairs, and heat rises, so it was disgustingly hot. Disgustingly hot. Um, spent a winter in New Zealand in 2017. Oh, that's cool. I, I would like to, I would like to have a white Christmas, preferably. I will probably have to do that, like, before global warming makes it a not, not a thing. <laughs> I guess, but I'm not going to be able to have a white Christmas here. I will have to go somewhere. So periodic table, aesthetic spreads, looking cute. We haven't really made a choice about, uh, what's the word? The background, the coloring. Yeah. <laughs> Coming to your office today was not ideal. Yeah, fair. I'm, I think that's a nice part. Like the cooler is right next to our office, so I can just close. We've got like a a curtain. Um, for people who haven't seen my house though, let's, let's draw you a map, you know, so when you break in, you know exactly where to go to get the journals. So in terms of our corridor at the top, like this is the corridor, right? And then there's like the door to the bedroom and then the door to the other bedroom. Rah, rah, rah. So like this part here is the bathroom door. So that's like the bathroom in here. There's a bath, there's the toilet, there's a sink. You don't need this level of detail. But here is where the cooler is. And the cooler blows air that way. Yeah. But this here is Vogel's office. And this here is my office. So the cold air blows straight past our offices and goes into this general area. Because that's like the stairs to downstairs. Yeah, downstairs. So rather than just have the cold air blow straight past us, which is not necessarily ideal for when you want to cool down the area that you're actually like, you know, working in for the majority of the time, we put up a tension rod and went and bought a cheap curtain and it just blocks off this area of the house. So now the cold air hits here and can go back into our office's smiley face. Yay. <laughs> Again, you guys don't need a map of my upstairs of my house, so we will put that to the side. But hey, if you were wondering, this is where the magic happens. 
And by the magic, I mean me procrastinating from getting any of my work done and getting incredibly distracted. But anywho, so we need to make a choice about how we're going to color the pages. And I kind of have a sneaking suspicion that's not a today job. So I'm going to put it on my list right here. Spoilers, there's a video coming out tomorrow. It's about the faux memo printer. Uh, let's see. So that is a make choice. Make choices <laughs> regarding uh, what is it? The Feb setup background. Because like I said, like, you know, not to draw a pros and cons list, because we shouldn't be, but if we were drawing a pros and cons list, like, the thing that the Distress Oxide Ink has going for it is the fact that, like, you can do the water splattering and you don't have to apply, like, hella water to the page. You can just, like, get it off really nice and easily. Um, and another bonus for that one is that the ink sits on top of the paper, so you're not going to end up with wrinkled pages, effectively. Like, the pages won't end up wrinkled. The benefit of the tea stained paper though is that you're going to get much quicker full coverage of your page but the downside is that there's going to be the wrinkling so <laughs> I'm not too sure we will see it could be like that I do like a combination of both in the end where I just like dip the pages in the tea staining or like whatever tea or coffee whichever I use and then after that we just do kind of like the corners or something and like darken them up with the distress oxide and then do a little spray moment like that might be cute but it's one of those things that probably needs more thought than 9 42 p.m jess is willing to put in <laughs> oh you're coming to new zealand in february exciting from paris that's so cool oh, coming for my journals oh no gotta put them in lockdown <laughs> If you can use the inks, you can still see the dot grid. You can, depending on which inks you use. So that's also another concern that I have, is that if I have the more saturated areas with the oxide inks with the brown, that makes the dot grid a lot harder to see because the contrast between the dots and the brown isn't as good as the contrast between the dots and the um, pink like was, I guess, in the October setup. I'm going to see if I can zoom this in and have it actually focus on it for you. I apologize for any shaky camera work that I'm doing right here. But hopefully you can kind of see that, like, here you can kind of see the dots, but here it's a lot harder to see the dots. Yeah? Shrugs? I don't know. And then we've got our beautiful, like, aggressive brown mark up there, which is not what I would want if I was doing this. But you can also kind of see, like, the ring work and things like that. Like, I'd want maybe some, but not as many. Could you use one of those super fluffy makeup brushes and things? Like, yes, I could. But then I would have to buy some. And that goes against my no spend. I think that would kind of not work, you know? I don't know. <laughs> it could also be that, like, we scrap this idea entirely. And we use washi tape or something like that. I don't have any chemistry related washi tape, but I do have ones that kind of like fit the notes written in a book kind of vibe. So yeah, it might be just like, I can't use the dabbers and do this. Hmm. And then if I use this, like does the brown pen actually go over the top of it? Well, that's also a question. Like, I guess the issue that we have with this brown pen is that it's a lot more red brown than this one but if I put it on this one that looks a little bit better so if we did like plants is cool <laughs> didn't you buy a bunch of paper pack not so long ago I did you make a very valid point let's go have a look at those <laughs> okay that's the wrong kind of paper but we do have texture papers, and that's a paper pad for something else. It's like a Rovance paper pad, and that's like, okay. Sorry. Mm. 
I'm not sure if either of these will work, but we can have a look at them. Because it's also like part of the reason that I wanted to do it on these pages in particular is that they have the dot grid. So I don't have to add any other papers in to try and like write down tasks and events and all of that kind of stuff. I could just work on the paper that I already have. If I were to use the paper pack papers though, which I think I've opened. Yeah, okay, I have. I hope that you can see those and it's not going to do a crazy like focus issue thing. Like this is old, but not really the vibe. And there's two of each of them. So like that's more like botanicals kind of a thing. So that's not quite right either. I think it's the thing that like I don't really necessarily want it to be super decorated. I would just want it to look old. And I think that this is not quite the right paper pack for that. Like most of these are, let's do a little flip through, a little quick, quick flip through. Like that's probably the closest and even that isn't quite right either. Cause that's more like, you know, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> like old businesses and things. And then there's like a typewriter thing and just, yeah, not this one. Like the color, the colors are like in the right realm-ish. Maybe a little more yellow than brown. Crunch. Like kind of a beige kind of thing. And then the problem with this one is that this is like very eclectic. So I wouldn't be able to do the whole month. Even if I found one that did work. Like that one could possibly work. But I only have two pieces of it. And I'm going to probably need a fair bit more than that to do my full month so that one probably won't work <laughs> throws it on the floor crunch so i'm thinking about trying the tea staining i just don't have tea right here and so it'd probably be something that i need to experiment with later yeah i think that it's probably just probably best to use the tea bags um just because i can get more done in less time and still use my paper so that's probably what I'm going to go with. Should we put up a poll? <laughs> a poll of, of like, you know, tea bags versus the, the distress oxides. I feel like I probably already made my choice. I do really like the water spray effect that the um, distress oxides gives, but I just don't think it's going to be suitable with the dots. So we made our choice. We're, we're just going to lock it in. It's one of those things like we don't, we don't have to have it be perfect. We just have to have it be usable. So we're going to do proper tea stained kind of stuff. Stained with tea or coffee, one of the two. Whichever works better. I'll probably do a little test tomorrow to see which one actually gives me the uh, look that I'm going for. Because I know that you can also, um, yeah, I was thinking about burning the edges. I honestly was. I was like, what if I just like rip down the edge of the, the journal and then like light it on fire and then we can start the video with like, on today's episode, we're playing with matches. <laughs> like, very uh, safe. <laughs> but I thought it would be cool to have the kind of like burnt edges kind of thing. But then I was like, why? I kind of wanted to like save that for maybe if I did like a pirate's theme at some point. I thought that that would kind of work best with that one. I don't know. Am I overthinking it? Of course I'm overthinking it. I am me. <laughs> and also, if you haven't done so recently, Tink, it's time for a drink break. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Aggressive Jess has arson on the mind. Ha <laughs> ha Light it on fire. <laughs> Yep, why not? On today's episode, we are lighting my journal on fire. But I think that for the purposes of this theme, and I will not be changing it because it is in pen, and also my patrons get to pick my theme, and this is the one they picked, so we're doing it. And I'm, I'm still excited about it. I'm just overthinking it. But um, we're going to do tea stain. It's going to be great. I'm just going to try it out tomorrow. I like the idea of ventilating it in a well aired out place. I appreciate that as a tip because, yeah, I don't want to I don't want to have a stinky journal. <laughs> yeah, so I could do like a tea, tea bags kind of thing. And the nice part is, is that if you do tea bags, you can effectively like use the tea bag to paint the page. So you take the tea bags, a very small amount of hot water, um, steep the ever loving heck out of it to make it as saturated as possible. And then you use the tea bag gently to paint on the page. 
effectively is what I saw. Um, making sure you have plenty of blotting paper or cheesecloth if you want it to be like, you know, reusable kind of a thing. Um, so let's say you really think that the burnt edges would suit. Okay. Alrighty. We're going to do a poll for this one because I, you know, I love a poll. Alrighty. So starting a poll, should Jess burn the edges of her journal? <laughs> Yes. And who? And then the other one, because I accidentally added another option, is I don't know, you do you. <laughs> that will come up shortly. Obviously, if you are here on the replay, I apologize that you can't participate in this poll, but you can let me know in the comments below. And hey, now would be a really good time to like the video if you've been enjoying the video. Or not. I'm like not your mother. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you what to do. <laughs> like, but anywho, so yes, our poll is should Jess burn the edges of her journal? Uh, and you guys can cast thine votes once it comes up. Sometimes it lags, and then you guys don't get the poll. And then you're like, Jess, what what even the heck? You said we could we could vote on things and you didn't even put it up for us, and now we're sad. There we go. Oh, there is an overwhelming amount of people who are like yes risk it for the biscuit let's burn the edges of the channel <laughs> this is gonna be fun to film i'm just gonna be like trying to burn it neatly and then like put it out i'm gonna need to like bring an oven mitt up <laughs> like, just be like big disclaimer don't try this at home ah uh, dear <laughs> yep yeah, it, it'll be lit i'm gonna like caption it my most lit bullet journal setup ever and then just like five fire emojis <laughs> it'll just be like a journal like on one side and then like a fire extinguisher on the other side like shh. can we like practice first please what here now i feel like this is yeah it can go very wrong very fast it's okay i will take necessary precautions to make sure i one don't set my journal on fire and two don't set my house on fire because yeah that would be not the vibes <laughs> don't really want to burn down my house for the sake of a video but I think it'll look really cool I mean like technically I could do it with pens but that just feels less authentic I am going to have to make sure that I have mapped out how much space I want for each of the pages before I start because I don't want a lot of fire happening I just want like a little small amount of fire yeah <laughs> with the other pages masked off everything will be fine yeah it's one of those things that like as said if I'm doing it, which by the looks of things, I might be doing it, we're going to do it in a way that actually is safe. So don't worry. Not suggesting that people actually burn their journal. It's like when those those Facebook pages, pages use your words, please. Okay. It's like when those Facebook pages say like, oh yeah, you can charge your phone in the microwave and then people actually do it. I'm like, no. Why would you put your phone in the microwave because of something you saw on Facebook? Please. But yeah, you should use a Bunsen burner to burn the edges to be on theme. I will now need to buy a Bunsen burner and install a gas tap so that I can do it. Jess now has the ultimate burn book. I love it. <laughs> so stay tuned, I suppose, to see me light fires to my journal. So we're going to put that in the aesthetic notes. Fire. Carefully. We'll put... We'll put carefully here too, so people know that I was considerate in this. Fire carefully. There we go. <laughs> the amount of us that are just ready for the chaos. I know, right? It'll be like the next video will be like why I quit my bullet journal in 2023, and it's like because my subscribers told me to burn it. <laughs> Which please just one Vogel and possibly the neighbors. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think that um. I think it'll be fine. I mean, I've told you guys, I mean, some of you were there. The first live stream that I like ever did for my patrons, my first patron live stream, I was like 20 minutes in, Vogel came in and he's like, I'm going to ruin your day. And I was like, what do you mean? And then I looked across and he had been sharpening knives and like had an accident and he just did not warn me. So I turned around and I'm like, blood. I'm like, oh my God, you needed to give me more of a heads up than that. What the heck? Anyway. <sighs> Yeah, exactly. That'll be the day that Vogel hurts himself again. We'll accidentally burn the house and Vogel will do himself an injure. Hopefully not. 
So in terms of the font or the like kind of lettering style for this, I'm thinking that I'm going to want the font to be very simple. Um, if we're going with the whole like old science book kind of vibe, I feel like it should really fit with that. I don't want it to be Dr. Scribble though, because I want, like, no offense to the old timey world who wrote things in messy cursive. I just want it to still be legible. So we need to find a font that's going to be legible, but also looks like it kind of fits the general theme we're going for. So typically when I would want to do this, I'd think of some kind of a keyword that I can <laughs> search up and look up on like a, a free font website effectively would be the easiest way to do it. I just need to think of a key term that I can use. Cause I'm like, if I look up science font, I swear it's all going to be like kitty stuff. Like we can, we can bring the keyboard over science font and have a go. But I think, yeah, it's all going to be like science fiction-y or science seraphy stuff, pulp science, science fair, vintage science display font. That doesn't look like what I want. Alrighty, I feel like you guys need to see what I see. So let's let's do a little screen share again. <laughs> uh, we want the window. We want the science font. We want the share. There you go, guys. Now you can see what I see. So if I look up science font, you can see like it's all very like Tron esque or like glitch font, and that's not what I want. Yeah, effectively, I want doctor's writing. Can I look up legible? I don't know how to spell legible. Legible cursive. <laughs> legible cursive. I want legible doctors. <laughs> legible doctors font. But now I'm just going to end up with like meme pictures of like the most beautiful um, doctor's handwriting ever. My keyboard would want to play the game. That would be nice. No, it's not having it's not having a bar of it. Can I, can I delete that? No, it's dead. Alrighty. Google image search. You're gonna be a biscuit. I'm gonna have to treat you like a biscuit. Um, nope. Doctors. There we go. Doctors legible handwriting. Okay. So it's all very like flat and stretched. <laughs> Why you're exhausted? I was up all night watching somebody planning their planning. <laughs> So, yeah, med school versus doctor. Because, um, like, I can't read that. That's that's a nothing. Um, medical alphabet is just, like, that's just great. <laughs> Architects font, scientist font, pharmacy font. All righty, let's see. Pharmacy. Let's see. I'm putting it in, like... Because that's all, that's pretty cute. I don't think it's quite what I want for this one, but that's pretty cute. Like, I think that that looks pretty cute. Like, it's it's that kind of stretched out cursive. Let's see. We also had the idea of scientist font, medical font. Alrighty, let's see. If I look up medical font, is it going to be, like, medical or is it going to be, like, yeah, it's, like, mm, <laughs> flatline. Yeah, not quite. Because I do like this. But that looks more like architecture, architect kind of style lettering, as opposed to the more chemistry-esque kind of thing. Like, if I look up chemistry font, I feel like it's going to be not quite right. I mean, I'll look it up anyways. Because you could do, if we went, went with, like, you know, kind of, quote, cutesy, um, you could try and write words out with the, like, periodic table elements kind of a thing. Um... But I don't think that really fits the vibe either. <laughs> uh, does that does that kind of make sense? Like this seems a little bit too aggressive. I don't really. I mean, it's, it is pretty cute, but everything has like a really long tail, and I don't think that's really what I want either. I think that I'm gonna look up stretched cursive font. Do the flat, easy to read doctor's writing in grey and then legible writing over the top like two font overlay. That'd be kind of cute. So, because this, I think this is kind of what I'm almost looking for is this idea of like stretched out, flat, but like tall. I don't know what the word parts are called. <laughs> what are the word parts called? You know, like this guy, okay? Like not this font specifically because this is a little bit too loopy for me, but where everything down here 
is really kind of flatlander and then things up there are quite tall. That's kind of what I'm thinking of um, would be a possibility. So it's still like legible, but it looks a little bit too scriptina. Flat, not easy to use. The font. Yeah, I usually, typically when I would go to look up fonts online, I wouldn't use Google Images. I'm just using them so that we have, like, have a lot of pictures. Um, I would usually use either 1001 free fonts or dafont.com or like any of those kind of free font websites because they're just easily um, available. What's the one that we mentioned here? It was drafting font. Drafting font. Alrighty. That's quite cute. I don't think it's quite what I'm after because it is that kind of like all caps kind of style. I think I'm more looking for a cursive, but it is pretty cool. I love this. I think this is very cool. I'm not going to do this, but I think it looks really cool. <laughs> and I mean, like, this is very cute, but this is more like science fair kind of vibes. Anywho. So I think that like, yeah, that stretched kind of cursive is probably my safest bet for that. Like I do technically have like this is like my go-to font for um, like my start of journal stuff. Where you water it. Interesting. Oh, that's probably because it was the last quote that I used. Oh, January? Reset? I don't know. This is a good font though. If you ever needed a font that was like kind of like simple and pretty and stuff, this one is really gorgeous. But it is, um, I mean, it's kind of almost the vibe that I'm looking for, except maybe a little bit too curly on some of the letters. Like if we simplified some of these letters, that might be nice. Anywho, I don't want to accept your cookies. Leave your cookies alone. There we go, team. So, a stretched cursive is probably what I'm going for. Um, so if I kind of just go in with... So if we do like... So if I kind of like rushed fast writing. I don't know if you can even see this. I also can't remember if I turned the focus on, but it's like a little bit stretched, but like flat on the top. And then the ones that come up, like the T, I think should in theory come up a little higher is what I'm thinking of. It would be something like that. But I'm thinking that if I can like write in the background of the <laughs> background in a lighter colored pen, like maybe even if not this brown, because this brown seemed to be kind of aggressive, maybe an even paler color brown, I could do some kind of sciencey notes in the background as a decorative element, which would be kind of cool. But anywho, team, I think that that's pretty good for my planning. Now would be the time that I would have to do things like my color palette and then actually start penciling things in. But I need to figure out to see like in terms of the tea staining what color brown the tea staining will be and then build my color palette from that it kind of looks like the font sign sign rathi sign yeah, look it up <laughs> yeah i think it's, it's effectively kind of like that i like that idea of it looks like a signature effectively <laughs> so i'm also not sure if i'll end up writing it with this or if i'll end up writing it with like I don't know, my, my Tombow Fudenosuke or something like that, that might be more of the kind of suitable pen choice for what I'm kind of trying to do here. Because these ones were all done with the Tombow Fudenosuke pen, um, which I like, didn't like getting really into the kind of cursive-esque kind of lettering, um, you know, the, the folligraphy, but with an actual kind of calligraphy pen, and I'm very slowly getting better at it. Yay, progress. <laughs> So that looks good. Need to decide on the color palette once I've done the tea stained paper and then do the, the burning kind of thing. Because what I'm thinking of for the burning is that I'll effectively take the page like this one here and I'll rip away the edge of the page like this so that I kind of know where I want to burn the paper and then I could burn that. Or what I could do is just figure out how to get a burnt effect with Tombos so I don't actually have to burn this. Like possibly I could do that with the 
what's this guy called? Distress Oxide. Like maybe I could do it with the Distress Oxide instead. I feel like I need to actually look up what burnt edges of paper looks like because in my mind I can't even think of what it would be like in terms of coloration. And obviously like there's going to be black because like charcoal. But let's see. So burnt paper edges have like a kind of orangey tinge to them, don't they? They've got like the black, black edge and then the kind of orangey tinge underneath it. Do I have a spare piece of paper? I mean, I've got my map. Yeah, we'll put my map underneath here. And we'll see if I can get my Tombo out. Yeah, but fire, it's okay. We're probably still going to do the fire. But then, like, we just kind of touch colour the edge here. I'm just going to do that the whole way down. And then if I can get, like, just so we can kind of see it, see what, in theory, it might look like. I mean, technically, if I can do this without burning uh, my journal, it might be nice, but we'll see. We'll see how it looks. Like, if it looks realistic enough, hmm. But if it doesn't, then nah. We'll just go back to doing fire. <laughs> All about that realism aspect, right? Yeah, that's what we come to this channel for, is realistic looking pictures. <laughs> so you kind of get that part of it, but then you need the kind of like burnt edge, dark brown kind of aspect of it too. What's the best thing to use for that? Um, we're just going to go in with a Tombow to start. We'll see if we can do that. You put it close enough to a candle. Yeah, exactly. I feel like if I get it to be close enough without actually burning it. So if I just do like a little bit of brown and then like we can see if we can kind of like blend it into the page possibly, but Because I think the nice part about doing the, the, the ripped edge first is that you have a lot more control over how much of your page gets taken away. <laughs> Gotta have a bed so I can turn on the sound of the fire. Uh, it's okay. I mean, like, I um, don't have matches in my room. I don't have a lighter either. I mean, I could ask Bogle to get me matches. Do we really want to see me burn my journal right this very second? I feel like I need a water brush. <laughs> Okay, you look like you could be way too small for this job. So, of course, I'm going to use it because that's how inclined I am. So, this one is a water brush. Technically speaking, you would fill this chamber with water and then um, it would let the water out as you paint stuff. I'm just going to use a little bit of water from my spray bottle. Ooh, crack, crack, crack. And we're just going to use my hand because I don't seem to have a water dish which is kind of unfortunate but if we just kind of blend that a little bit possibly like it'll pick up the tombow it won't <laughs> it'll pick up the tombow it won't pick up the tombow it'll pick up the tombow jewel brush marker it won't pick up the uh fudenosuke because the fudenosuke is water resistant um but the problem is is that this is not watercolor paper so in terms of our like blending aspect, I guess you could say, it doesn't blend super well once it's been put down on the paper, it kind of like adheres to place. So we're still gonna have a fairly, I don't know, what's the word for it? Distinct line, I guess, between the, uh, the brown Tombow that we put straight onto the page and the kind of like blurred out part here. So like while we do have a little bit of blending going, it isn't really, quite the vibe we're looking for is it i feel like we are just going to end up using fire to get this done properly so i guess if it, you let it sit there for a while it kind of blends out a little bit but not as much as i would probably like yeah it's gonna bleed bleed out nicely but it looks good on the back <laughs> like i think that looks better honestly i feel like they're not in frame apologies team like, that looks pretty cool. But you can kind of see, like, the bleeding through the page. Yeah. Hey, if I stamp it onto the other side, it looks pretty good. <laughs> because, of course, this was all wet when I turned it over. So that's also something to watch out for if I do it this way. I think that looks pretty cool. We just need to, like, put it on something and then blotch it down. But it's not quite close enough, I think. 
to to a realistic look at what this would actually look like. I am making quite a mess today, but it looks cool, eh? I think that like Byron by Zeta fonts is nice. Yeah, it would probably take a bit of work to do it. I'm like, eh, I could just use fire. <laughs> Like, that could be a solution, but I think it's one of those things I'm going to have to do some trialing before I commit to it, because I do not want to, like, this, as it stands, doesn't look quite good enough. I mean, I think you can kind of see, like, see what I see. Um, it doesn't blend out as well as I would probably want it to, to make it look as realistic as I would like it to look. Um, I also have a problem that, like, I find um, kind of random or non-uniform things really challenging to do in a way that looks natural, if that kind of makes sense. So for me, I would end up probably being a little bit too uniform on this colouring in or something like that. I think it's probably going to just have to be fire. Okay, if you want to see fire today, one, I'm going to have to go get some matches, and two, it means you can have a prolonged tink drink break. I will be back with the necessary supplies. Alrighty, team. So, we have the matches and we have my oven mitt. <laughs> so, the idea here is that the oven mitt is here so that I can, like, bot, bot, blot the fire out if necessary. We're going to move all of this stuff away because that is not something that we want to get, get fire on it. We're going to put this back here so it's out of the way too. We have the Coke Zero here. If we need something liquid, <laughs> we're going to get all of my pencils out of the way. Effectively, everything that is in the way is going out of the way. All right. We want to make it so that then everything is cleared from the area. This can be done as safely as possible. To be honest, I'm probably not going to do this part inside if I actually end up doing it. Um, I will do it outside. We're also going to get my craft mat. And put that underneath our journal so that then that's all kind of safe. That looks pretty cute. What else might we need? We've got our put our outer things, we've got our matches, we've got all of our stuff moved out of the way. Damp towel, unless it accidentally spreads. Alrighty, we can probably sort that too. Here's my flannel, here's my towel. I'm gonna go put some water on my towel. Alrighty. <laughs> yes, this oven mitt has just, it's seen things, guys. <laughs> like, it's been through a lot. <laughs> I really don't want to put the oven mitt on top of my, uh, my journal either, because yuck. Alrighty, we're going to go moist in the towel. All right, we've got a damp towel now. It's looking good. We're being safe. So, towel is here, looking moist. It's actually really not going to be that scary. It's going to be fine. So, general recommendations when using matches. You should strike the match away from yourself because you don't want to accidentally let yourself on fire. You want to light your journal on fire, obviously. Um, in terms of this, we're going to take... Oh, dear. <laughs> see it, se it seems like YouTube's like you can't possibly do this you can't possibly have this fire happening so we're going to have to turn the camera back on wow oh. 
There we go. <laughs> that one is off. Uh oh. <laughs> Do not try this at home. Let's see, team. I think <laughs> that I've worked you all up to nothing. Isn't that unfortunate? Because my camera has decided that it's dead. I suppose it probably did. It overheated and it didn't even have fire yet. How unfortunate. So I guess. Let's see. I might have to take myself off and then go back. I know, right? Yep, see, YouTube is censoring me. <laughs> Alrighty, one second. Nope, it's 100% gone kaput. So I guess, team, you're just going to have to wait and see what happens. <laughs> I know, but thank you for being here. My camera is now, how we say, flat. So that's something for me to figure out. Thank you for joining me for the first live stream of 2023. Stay tuned to see how my book burning goes. If you enjoyed today's stream, please do give us a big thumbs up and all of the good stuff. And I guess I'll see you later. <laughs> yep, yeah, there we go. We're going to have to do a part B. Bye for now. <laughs>